Hello everyone, welcome back to Taking Back Crypto. My name is Forrest. This is the show that tries to take back the word crypto by talking about the benefits of Bitcoin. And in today's episode, I wanted to talk about something that happened last week, which was me hosting my first meetup. I live in a small community of around a thousand people, and there has never been a Bitcoin meetup in this area. So I posted on the local kind of classified website that this area uses. I posted on a Facebook group and I put up flyers to advertise. And I'm actually going to link in the description some, some assets that you can download if you want to do this yourself. I made two different flyers so far and I'll add more because I'll probably end up making a new one every single month. And uh, these flyers, you'll just be able to put in your own kind of words. And you can do that just with like MS Paint even. You don't need Photoshop. I'll make it really easily and accessible. I also put my own QR code, which you can generate a QR code just by Googling QR code generator, which is what I did. And that, that QR code linked people to their own email. So if they took a, you know, they click the link to it, it opens up their email puts in my email address with the subject line Bitcoin Meetup. And so that's what I would suggest doing. It was quite effective. I ended up uh, getting, for, you know, 1,000 people area, I got six people to show up for the first meetup. And it was fantastic. I also had a few people that weren't able to make it, and they reached out just saying how cool it was to see that Bitcoin was happening in this, in this area. And it went really well, you know. Uh, I didn't really know what to do as a host of a meetup. I tried to find information about like how to host a Bitcoin meetup. There was some stuff about how to host meetups um, that I researched. And it's kind of applicable, but what I ended up doing was just having one question in mind. And this is this was the first meetup, so I just had the question of what is it about Bitcoin that interests you? And that got into the history of every individual that was there. And there were people there that were as knowledgeable as I am about Bitcoin and had gone through the crypto sphere as well and kind of realized that all of these are vaporware or scams and that Bitcoin is the only one with any true, not, not only use case, but only the one with the true potential to be revolutionary and to be uh, the new backing of money uh, and to become sound money uh, globally. And there was uh, there were two people, there were a couple people there that um, were a little bit intermediate and you know they, they had come from sort of the gold realm. They were interested in gold and hard assets and stocks and and hold and, and assets in general. And uh, you know they were, technically aware of certain aspects of Bitcoin and and then there was uh, people there that were complete beginners had never bought in but uh, you know had tried in the past and couldn't figure it out basically so there was all levels of conversation ability and because of the size we were able to kind of get to each person and kind of explore certain ideas now, what I found is that um, the conversation's incredibly interesting, of course, because it's about Bitcoin, but also incredibly difficult to guide things in the right way. So I think that the next meetup, you know, that was just the meeting of these people. And, I, and I'm hoping that, you know, new people will come in, but at least we'll have the, the kind of core group um, there that we've already met and we already kind of know each other's stories a little bit we can kind of go into some deeper subjects so i've written down and that will be part of the assets as well just a whole list of things about bitcoin uh you know we could explore satoshi uh not who he is because you know there's a reason he wants to be anonymous but what it means the actions that he took um the things that he did uh, we can talk about proof of work versus proof of stake, you know, so there, there's all of these different things that I've written down and they'll just be jumping off points because there can be lulls, even though there's a nice big group, you know, there was this kind of point in the meetup where everybody looked at me and they said, okay, well, what's next? And I said, 
I don't know. Like, uh, yeah, well, I guess we, you know, we can meet up again next uh, month. Uh, I was just hoping to do this kind of monthly. And they were like, okay, sounds great. And then somebody, you know, that was just like a momentary like thing. And for me, it's like, I don't want to be the host in the way of like, of like being the only knowledgeable person, being the only person like, or, or like, okay, your time is up. Let's talk, let, let the next person talk. But there does need to be a little bit of like awareness of, of certain individuals because some people are definitely going to be a lot more talkative and, and kind of center the conversations around what they're interested in. And there'll be other people that are a little bit um, more reserved in their conversation and, and don't interject or don't, you know, express themselves. So for me, my, my role as the host was not necessarily to just be like super directive, but to just recognize what's happening in the group. Because, you know, especially if your meetup ends up being larger and larger, there might be these little break off conversations that happen with the group that we had, it was small enough that we could have one conversation we could all be a part of to some degree. And I just noticed that when one person was kind of dominating that conversation, that when there was ability to, I would try to steer it to somebody else and say, okay, what is it about it, Bitcoin that interests you, right? Or, or you know, uh, what are your thoughts on this? You know, just kind of a little bit of guidance to have everybody participate. Now, it ended up going really well. It was about an hour and a half and everybody was enthusiastic about the next one, about coming to the next one. Everybody, f the energy really felt like everybody had a good time. And I think we only scratched the surface, of course, an hour and a half is not enough time to get into much. But there was these key little things, you know, like uh, one person didn't realize, you know, he was talking about miners and he said, okay, well, the more miners, then the more Bitcoin. And he didn't realize that there's a fixed issuance of Bitcoin and that more miners mean more hash rate. And those miners have more probability of getting it if they introduce more hash rate um, compared to, you know, and, and all the other miners don't add more. But they didn't realize that basically you can only increase your odds of getting the same amount of Bitcoin. You can't increase the amount of Bitcoin mined, which is a huge differentiator from any other commodity. Um, and then in that talk, I, I ended up talking about the difficulty adjustment as well and how that's a balancing factor and how basically we want as much hash rate as possible because that that is the security of the next block. So, you know, Bitcoin is just a fascinating thing. I think the other thing that I will do for the next one is I'll print out the questions, or not the questions, but the subjects, uh, the, the huge list of subjects I have. And I will also print out the white paper. Because as much as there are podcasts and blogs and crypto Twitter and, you know, even this show, it is all right there in the Bitcoin white paper. It's all there, not what it has done to the world, but its purpose and how it works. And with that is a lot of, you know, you, you basically have to go line by line and start to understand what these things mean. And in that is a lot of complexity and a lot of um, time to understand it. So that's why I personally have spent thousands of hours doing this, learning about Bitcoin, learning about crypto at large. And I hope to continue learning as, of course, I'm not the most knowledgeable person. And every single thing that I listen to and watch, I learn a little bit more. And of course, the other thing that's interesting about Bitcoin is that we compare it to something. We compare it to US dollars. And, and that's a currency that has uh, many factors to it interest rates, debt amount, debt issuance. And, uh, you know, we can compare it to so many other types of currencies and assets. And all of those comparisons create new conversations that are interesting as well. So there's no shortage 
in interesting conversations to have at a Bitcoin meetup. And just from having this first one, I realized that I need to keep doing this. You know, there's a, there was, I've, I've issued um, basically the next time that there will be one and there's one person that's not able to make it so far. And for me, immediately, I'm like, okay, well, that person was, that, that person happened to be the one that's as knowledgeable as me. So now it's like, okay, a lot of the conversation will like lead on my expertise of this. And that makes me a little bit nervous because then it's a little more pressure on me, right? It, it, having somebody else that knows as much as me and, and knows little different aspects than me and has different, retained certain information uh, differently than I have and I've retained different information than they have, that takes the pressure off, right? Having, having that. But it doesn't really matter. I, I feel like just having this is so valuable because there's just little things that we can talk about. Like there's one person there that happens to run their own business and be a merchant, you know, somebody who sells something. So we can talk about, okay, well, have you thought about accepting Bitcoin? Have you, th and, and, and what does that take to accept Bitcoin? We can talk about BTC pay. We can talk about um, proprietary software. We can talk about just really simplistic QR code wallet printout. We can talk about the different options, and that's a that's an interesting subject, and that will inspire conversation. And I think having that that subject list to fall back on when there's a when there's a lull, when there's a pause, will be helpful. I think having the white paper there may be helpful, and I think. That Bitcoin can have its greatest effect on the world when it affects the most amount of people. Now, that is just an obvious statement. And these kind of things, it's an idea. It's an idea, and ideas take over people's minds. Like, Bitcoin has lodged itself, it's a little bit of a brain worm, a little bit of an RFK brain worm that has gotten in there, uh, not physically, but just mentally, and uh, has made me reevaluate, made me think about the world differently, and made me think that this is a good option, and that we need, uh, that, that basically Bitcoin will solve a lot of issues for the world, um, and it will solve... It'll, it'll actually come to fruition, all of the, the great things that it can do, when it has mass adoption. Just as a social network or even the internet has no value if you were the only one to use it and the only one to contribute to it, and basically, like, it has value now because it's been contributed to and there's content on there, but at the beginning, the internet, when it first started out and was just a couple connections, a couple nodes, it only had a very small amount of value. And it only had the value of those interactions and the content that was connected between those people. And as those nodes, as those computers got connected to the internet, as those individuals got invested into the internet or into a social media platform, the value of that grew. There was more to do, there was more to learn, there was more to see, there was more... Yeah, basically more to do. And that is the exact same thing with Bitcoin. The network effect is powerful. And one person has the capability of spreading it to many others. Just by wearing this shirt, I have conversations. Just by sharing that a place that I plan on visiting, when people ask about travel, that's, that's a common thing that I talk to people about is travel place that I hope to visit is El Salvador. And the reason is because there's a historical moment happening right now with it being the first nation to make Bitcoin legal tender. We, we exist in this, this moment in history, we exist in this day and age, and that is a monumental historical thing that we will, they'll be in the history books for that. And they probably already are in some history books for that. And the amount of change that we can have with ideas is powerful. That's why I hope to inspire others uh, through this podcast to learn more about this. And this is a way of me 
using these social media platforms, YouTube and content creation, my own voice to share the good word, you know, the gospel of the orange coin. So thanks everyone. If you want to support this podcast, the best thing you can do, of course, is the network effect. Tell a friend, share it on social media, whatever. And if you wanted to donate directly, there is a Bitcoin wallet address in the description. And uh, yeah, just subscribe, follow all that stuff. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks everyone for watching and listening.